नमस्कार हूँ छू चित्रा आज एक एवं व्यक्ति साथ मुलाकात करीश आम तो भारत ने ज्यादी अमेरिका की बात हो बने वच्चे संबंधों खूब सारा रहा है छाँ पांच वर्ष थी आ बने देशों संबंध में एक रीते मजबूताई जवा है आज आप एज संबंधों पर बातचीत कर कारण कि आज आप एमनी मुलाकात कर जीओ डेप्यूटी चीफ ऑफ मिशन तरीके निमणूक थी है मिस्टर एडगर्ड केगन जो अपनी साथ है अत्य साबरमती आश्रम की मुलाकात पास थी जाए आखिर क्या प्रकार विचारों से नमस्ते हाउ इज यू डे आई मीन यू आर इन अहमदाबाद सो हाउ इज योर एक्सपीरियंस वी आर इन साबरमती आश्रम वाह It's great to be back here. I've been here a number of times mm. and this is one of the mm. most special places in okay. India to me. Mm -hmm. And it's special not just because Gandhi ji mm. lived here. Okay. Um and but his presence made it special. But mm. also because mm. this is a place that had so much influence on the United States. The US right. civil rights movement mm -hmm. in many ways right. was born mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. um and so when uh the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr came to India mm -hmm. he came to visit right. and it's a place that's very special to me as an American because in many ways mm -hmm. this I think of as one of the places mm -hmm. that brings our countries together right first of all I would I would like to congratulate you on becoming a deputy thank you very much commission. right so uh the first uh, thing is uh let's talk about the uh, serious issues between two countries that is trade issues mm -hmm. and the visa issues i'll start with trade issues uh, preferential status has been withdrawn by america mm -hmm. uh, what are the views and what are the steps that us government is taking so as to smoothen the uh, trade between two countries Well as you know the trade between the two yeah. countries is a very very important part of the relationship and we are very happy the hmm. trade has grown hmm. so much in the last hmm. 20 years. Hmm. On the other hand we think the trade is only a fraction of what it could and should okay. be. We would like to see that trade grow. Mm -hmm. We've been working with the Indian government for some time on a variety of trade issues that we've been trying to bring together as part of a negotiation and trying to resolve some of the things that we see as problems. Um and I think the Indian government also has some issues that they would like addressed. We made very clear that we were looking for progress and that it would be very hard um for us to continue um with the as as things had been if we didn't see some progress. Mm -hmm. I think we were very clear that the um generalized system of preferences GSP mm -hmm. was something that would be very hard to renew mm -hmm. if there wasn't progress by uh the Indian side. And obviously we were disappointed that mm. we were not able to make progress and you know the decisions that were made were made very much based on mm -hmm. things that we communicated to the Indian mm -hmm. side ahead of time. I think that where we are now is we would like to see progress. We would like to okay. see trade between our countries increase. Mm -hmm. We think that both sides benefit. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we want that trade to be fair. We mm -hmm. want that trade to be reciprocal, yes. and we want there to be opportunities for companies and individuals on both sides. So, do you think FTA, a uh, free trade agreement, is the only key to smoothen the well, trade no, between is, two countries? Well, no, we were not talking about an FTA at all. Okay. I want to be very clear. The FTA okay. is not, there's no FTA that's on the table. Okay. an FTA is a very complicated thing and obviously the so US is not thinking on that we, we you know i think that i mean my sense is that india is not mm -hmm. thinking on that i think that mm -hmm. we have a variety of of issues on things ranging mm -hmm. from medical devices mm -hmm. um dairy mm -hmm. um a variety of other issues mm -hmm. that we would like to see progress on mm -hmm. where we think that there are restrictions mm -hmm. that are unfair Mm -hmm. on American products. At the same time, we recognize this has to be negotiation. Mm -hmm. This is something where India has its own equities and interests. Mm -hmm. And so we would like to see progress made okay. on this and we believe that the government understands this mm -hmm. and the government also understands the value as does our government mm -hmm. of trying to reach an agreement that helps both Indians and Americans. Okay. So do you think the new government that is just formed that that is just elected right now few days ago uh will be that much uh, open to US and as your policies the new government I think that the I think that the go uh, government hmm. for some time has been very clear about the value of the relationship with the US okay. hmm. I think that it is very clear to the Indian government hmm. um as it is to our government that both sides benefit from increases in trade hmm. that we want opportunity we want there to be opportunities that are fair for both country mm -hmm. companies and individuals from both countries. Mm -hmm. So I think the Indian government's aware of that. I'm personally optimistic mm -hmm. that we can find ways to resolve these issues. I think the US recognizes that India faces challenges. 
partners. Mm -hmm. I think that we hope that India will also recognize that it's not just American firms to benefit mm -hmm. from increased market access in India, but mm -hmm. this helps Indians by making, by bringing down prices for Indian consumers, mm -hmm. by expanding the range of choice, by mm -hmm. giving them access to the highest quality products. And okay. we think that over the past 25 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. Indians have seen the benefits mm -hmm. and the massive changes that have happened in India mm -hmm. as a result of mm -hmm. greater openness. Mm -hmm. So can we expect some big good news uh, regarding trade from both the, both the countries? Or the talks are, know or about, the dialogues are being... I, I mean, you yes. know, it's always risky to overpromise. Yeah. I yeah. think that both sides are going to work on this. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the new government has just been formed. Mm -hmm. And so they need to have a little bit of time to mm -hmm. sort of make sure that they have everything in place mm -hmm. and that they're ready mm -hmm. to work um, right. on this. When they are, they mm -hmm. will find us very open and very mm -hmm. eager to find ways that come to real solutions, mm -hmm. that make real changes that are good for both countries. Okay, okay. How optimistic you are about the new government? I think, that, first of all, okay. I mean, we're very optimistic because we think that this is an extraordinary statement of confidence by the mm -hmm. people of India. Mm -hmm. um, they have a majority of the kind that has been extraordinarily rare in Indian history, um, certainly in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. And we believe that this reflects the confidence that the Indian people have in the mm -hmm. government. And it's also a weighty responsibility to try mm -hmm. and bring change that clearly the people of India voted for. I think that we believe the government mm -hmm. has the authority and mm -hmm. has the interest and the inclination to make the kinds of changes that we think will help strengthen the mm -hmm. Indian economy okay. and create opportunities mm -hmm. for Indians. And obviously, we think that's in the U.S. interest. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth right. stressing that from our standpoint, mm -hmm. we have a stake in India's success. Mm -hmm. We right. are not looking for zero-sum games because our belief is hmm. that if a stronger India that takes hmm. its place in the, hmm. its rightful place in the world hmm. is something that's very much in the US interest hmm. and hmm. i think if you look closely the US has been very clear about that hmm. for the particularly for the last two years mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about now h1b visa the rules and regulations are very much stringent for indians and especially most of the gujaratis are there in us and they they also want to come uh, they also visit frequently there. Mm -hmm. So some regulations, some rules of uh, US government, uh, let's say for example, uh, the if I'm an applicant, I have to give my social media name, I have to give my social media accounts, uh, privacy and everything that has been disclosed to US government. There is no need, I guess. Uh, there is, I guess, wh what are the thoughts behind this? I mean, why no. do I share my social media status with US government, which I'm no. not comfortable enough to share with my government? Okay, well, I mean, a couple of things. I think one is that what people are being asked to share hmm. is essentially their user, the, the, the details, no, but not their passwords. There's no okay. access to it. Hmm. <coughs> There's no access to anything that's not already public. Mm -hmm. So this is basically hmm. to make it easier to get information that's hmm. already publicly available. So if we were to search you on Facebook, hmm. Presumably, we could find your Facebook profile. You might not hmm. choose to make us friends, but hmm. that's what we're basically okay. looking for. And this is for security. You know, this is, <coughs> pardon me, this is a, a recognition of the fact that hmm. I think that, hmm. you know, there are some real challenges hmm. with um, on, on the security front. Hmm. At the same time, I think it's worth noting that the numbers of visas that we're giving to mm -hmm. Indians have not gone down. Okay. Um, the numbers of H-1B visas that are going to Indians mm -hmm. have not gone on. To address the H-1B issue, hmm. I think there's a broad perception in India. Hmm. First, that the, that the program is about India. Okay. I mean, I think it's worth noting the H-1B program is a global program. Okay. It has not people just from India. all over the world. Okay. Hmm. Indians get a disproportionate share mm -hmm. of the um, H-1B visas. Hmm. But this is not the intent of the program. Hmm. This is how things have worked out. So okay. I think that you know the fundamental rules of the program haven't changed. Yes, mm -hmm. there's a little bit where there's more scrutiny of the companies mm -hmm. that are applying for mm -hmm. um, to get H-1Bs, mm -hmm. um, and that's in part to protect the applicants because okay. we want to make sure they're not being abused by mm -hmm. being brought in by companies that have misled us mm -hmm. and may not be doing what they say they were going to do. So it is just for the security purposes. <coughs> I think that it's well, but on the H-1Bs, it's mm -hmm. also because. Hmm. For Americans, H-1B program is not about India. It's okay. a global program. Global program. Right. And so whereas for Indians, hmm. I think the H-1B program is seen as being about India mm -hmm. and a litmus test for the U.S.-India relationship. Hmm. So I think that from our standpoint, what we're looking for hmm. is making sure that we have a program that works, hmm. 
that it, uh, that achieves its objectives right. of bringing in people in areas where we don't have sufficient skilled people in the United States. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and at the same time, hmm. if it doesn't lend itself to abuse of the people who've hmm. applied for the program. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, there are there's hmm. challenges in doing this, and hmm. I think that we have to recognize that whatever we do, right. there are always going to be rumors and reports in India that suggest that somehow it's bad for India. Okay. But if you look at the overall changes, the overall numbers, mm -hmm. they haven't changed. Right. The number okay. of Indians going hmm. <coughs> is more or less the same as it's been in the past. Okay. The number of visas hasn't changed. Hmm. Now, we don't have the final numbers for this year. There might be okay. tiny changes. But what I've seen so far suggests hmm. that we're not likely to see hmm. any major changes. Huh. And I think that that continues to be because Indian applicants are very qualified. Right. There are many companies that see benefits to bringing qualified applicants mm -hmm. to the United States. And the program is designed to address gaps where we don't have enough okay. people mm -hmm. um, with the right skills. Mm. So my sense is this has been exaggerated to some degree in India. Um, but most of the Indians are not happy with this. Uh... Right, but I mean, <laughs> what I would say very respectfully is that most people huh. have heard stories huh. about this. But the truth is the number of applicants hasn't huh. changed fundamentally. Hmm. The number, or, I'm sorry, the number of people receiving visas mm -hmm. hasn't changed fundamentally. Okay. And I think it's a reflection of the fact that Yes, the procedures have changed slightly, mm -hmm. but they're but the the results and the outcomes are more or less the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, since we are talking about visa, <coughs> um, we Gujarati is already uh, asking for the office uh, office of the uh, U.S. embassy yeah. here in Gujarat, and we always have to travel to Mumbai just yeah. to get the visa. And so, is there any procedure? Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is a long-standing issue. I mean, this huh. is something we're constantly reviewing. I think that, you know, as a practical matter, mm -hmm. from our standpoint, we, mm -hmm. you know, it's very difficult and very challenging for us to establish new facilities. We're obviously always aware of the fact mm. that this is a, tr it's a problem for Gujarati. Mm. It's not just Gujarati. I mean, mm. you know, throughout India, there are people who have to travel mm -hmm. for much further than they'd like to be able to come to one of mm. our consulates mm -hmm. or to our embassy. Mm. We recognize it's a challenge. At the same time, mm. you know, we have to balance a lot of different things. I think what we're focused on okay. is giving the best possible service, mm -hmm. making sure that we turn visa applications around very quickly okay. so that if people do have to travel, and in look, mm. inevitably, there'll be people who have to travel. Wherever we mm. have facilities, mm. we're never we're going to have one in every town, in every village. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, what we're trying to do is make the experience mm -hmm. as simple and as mm -hmm. quick as possible okay. and so that people are able to go. And I would note that we're very proud of the Gujaratis who do travel to right. the U.S. We think that they bring a lot as visitors, as students, um, as immigrants, mm -hmm. they bring a lot to our country. Okay. And we think that you know the Gujarati American mm -hmm. community is very, very important to the relationship mm -hmm. between the United States mm -hmm. and the United States. So in, um, uh, let's say for example, how many years we will see US, uh, US office in our Ahmedabad city? Because we have okay. the British office here. Yeah, that, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, very honestly, I don't know. Okay. Um, I think, but I can tell you that if we feel that at some hmm. point in the future that the numbers and the, the, our resources hmm. permit us to do it, mm -hmm. I think we'll consider it seriously. I think that at the same time, we believe that right now our current mm -hmm. setup does allow us to serve the needs mm -hmm. of Gujaratis as well as all the other people mm -hmm. in India. And you know, while inevitably people are going to have to travel, I mean, no matter where, how many different facilities we have, it'll never be enough in terms of reducing the need to travel. So I think what we're going to try and do is make sure that we provide the best service we can with what we We can have. be hopeful that. Yeah. We can be hopeful yeah. that. So uh, let's take a break and then okay. we'll continue our talk. So let's take a break. And then we'll talk about what we're going to do in the United States. We're going to talk about what we're going to do in the United States. We're going to talk about what we're going to do in the United States. We're going to talk about what we're going to do in the United States. TV9 Gujarati YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the bell button. Please subscribe to the bell button. Please subscribe to the notification button. Welcome back. We're going to talk about the new DCM. Mr. Edgar Kagan is with us. Welcome again. Thank you, Chetra. It's great to see you. So we were talking about a few issues. Now let's focus on the new issues. Now let's focus on you. <laughs> you are in Gujarat and you have been yep. in Gujarat many times. So, uh, what do you like about the Gujarat as a state, uh, especially we are at the riverfront. So, uh, what are your thoughts about the development of the uh, state and the development of the city? Well, I think first of all, I'll say that I, what I like about Gujarat is mm -hmm. it's a beautiful place and mm -hmm. it there's, yep. so, there's such variety. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to Jamnagar, I've been to Ahmedabad a number of times, I've been to um, Baroda. Mm -hmm. um, I unfortunately have not, I had to mm -hmm. cancel a trip to um, Gear, which I owe my family, 
Um, and so we've loved being, we've loved coming to Gujarat. And I think that what I love about Gujarat is both coming from the history, the diversity, and the warmth. Like Gujaratis have been so welcoming. And I think Gujaratis have a, it's a very special place in the U.S.-India relationship because right. so many of the Indian American community in the United mm -hmm. States are from Gujarat. Mm -hmm. But what I love is the mixture of the sort of the different strands of India's history that you mm -hmm. find here, and also the dynamism and the energy. Mm -hmm. And coming to Ahmedabad, mm -hmm. what I love is the ambition, mm -hmm. like the desire to continue making Ahmedabad a better and better place for its citizens. I spent some time yesterday with the mayor and the municipal commissioner, right. and they walked me through the riverfront project. Mm -hmm. And I, I was so impressed mm -hmm. because it's both mm -hmm you know, ambitious, but it's also mm. geared at bringing benefits to regular people. Right. And to me, you know, I see that uh, at larger scale in different parts of Gujarat. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's very special. Um, I've, I consider that to be something that reflects the very mm. best of the way India is transforming today. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, there are huge challenges, right. and I think it's important not to downplay them. But at the mm. same time, mm. I think that that sense of ambition and mm. wanting to do things mm. reflects, I think, the very best of Gujaratis and of right. India. You have been into Mumbai. Uh, and now you are straightly, go, straightly going to Delhi. Mm -hmm. So what are the new challenge, challenges that you are thinking that you, that will be in mm -hmm. front of you? Well, this is an incredible moment. Right. You know, the, as you alluded to earlier, we, there's a new government mm -hmm. that I think is very committed to strengthening India and strengthening the U.S.-India relationship. Right. So I will have the great honor, the great privilege of being able to work on that. And for me, you know, a, I've been a diplomat for 28 and a half years. Okay getting a chance to work on the India-US mm -hmm. relationship right now mm -hmm. at a time when so much in the world is changing and mm -hmm. India is developing so quickly mm -hmm. is an extraordinary privilege. Okay. This is what diplomats dream of. Right. So what I will get to do is mm -hmm. be able to play a role in how we implement the decisions of our leaders right. in trying to find ways to solve some of the challenges that you discussed. Right. But also there's so many areas where we can do so much. I mean whatever issues government works mm -hmm. on I believe we can cooperate on. You can, we, so can we say challenges are less and opportunities are absolutely endless. The opportunities are endless. Right. And I'm very confident yeah. when the history of the 21st mm -hmm. century is written, mm -hmm. the most important chapter is going mm -hmm. to be what happens between the U.S. and India. India. If right. we get the U.S.-India relationship right, right. I'm very confident mm -hmm. that will make sure that the 21st century goes mm -hmm. in a way that's good for all the people in the world. Okay. And not just for the people in India and the mm -hmm. United States. And so mm -hmm. it's tremendously exciting to work on that. Mm -hmm. There are challenges. Right. Um, but, you know, look, life would be boring if you didn't hmm. have challenges. Hmm. Uh, so, now no more serious questions. I'm okay. going to ask you about cricket. Are okay. you a cricket fan? <laughs> I am. Uh, mainly because with, my youngest huh. son has become obsessed with cricket. Huh. Right. And so, and through him, my oldest son and hmm. like so my daughter still is kind of annoyed, mainly because her okay. brothers always talk so and argue about So, which is your favorite it. team? You know, it's India. very, <laughs> yeah, right now, India, very, um, though I would note it's a little tricky because my two younger children okay. were both born in Australia. Ha. Ha. Um, but yes, or two days ago, hmm. my sons and I stayed up till the end of the match with Australia. Right. And I'll let you guess who we were cheering for. <laughs> um, <India>. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and as a matter of fact, my boys were right. just shouting and they were so happy. So right. that was a lot of fun. Um, we've gone to a lot of, uh, a fair number mm -hmm. of IPL matches. Um, mm -hmm. My youngest son is a Chennai Super Kings fan, which is so <coughs> high treason in <laughs> right. Mumbai. Right. Um, I mean, when his friends find out about that, when my friends find mm -hmm. out about that, they're always shocked. So my not oldest only the, son the trade connects a, both countries, <coughs> but the uh, sports even, you know, connects the both countries yeah. and people. Uh, so you are in Gujarat, so have you uh, been to any iconic places? I've been to some, probably not as many as I should. I went to see the Statue of Unity hmm. in December, which right. is a new iconic place. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty amazing. Right. Just the size and the scale of it alone. Hmm. Um, I've been to places around Ahmedabad. Um, I've been mm. to the, you know, I've been to visit the, you know, the old city. Mm -hmm. I've been to visit the, um, uh, 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 I forget the name of the temple. Mm -hmm. In Ahmedabad. Yeah, in Ahmedabad. Okay. And you know, I did a walking tour of the old city several times. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I've been to the step well. The is it the Adalaj? Adalaj, Adalaj yes. right. Um, right. Step well. Mm -hmm. So I've loved those places. And in fact, my mm -hmm. biggest regret is that when I come, mm -hmm. I do too much work. And obviously, this place. Right. When I it's come, I do too place. much work and not enough tourism. Yes. Uh, so. 
let's talk about dishes have you uh, tasted any any of the gujarati dishes yes <laughs> one of the things that's really interesting is that when you grow up in the united states huh. what you think of as indian huh. food is basically north indian food right and so coming to mumbai one of the big surprises for me one of the great pleasures was discovering gujarati cuisine but also you know other things hmm. like maharashtrian food I knew a little bit of um, of southern um, of India's southern uh, cuisine mm -hmm. because I'd served in Malaysia before, mm -hmm. so I knew some of that. But you know, there's so many extraordinary dishes, dishes in India from different regions, mm -hmm. and you know, it's it's been mm -hmm. great. And I would say that we've really grown to love Gujarati food. Um, okay. So, do you remember any name of the dishes, dhokla or the thepla? Dok, I mean, we love dhokla, <laughs> um, and there's so many different kinds of dhokla. I mean, everyone tastes better than the last. Right. Um, we love. Um, I'm drawing now. I, I actually was re trying to remember this morning, and I wrote some things down, and I've forgotten. <laughs> but the there's um, dishes mm. with the um, the uh, the uh, winter vegetables, the winter squash. I okay. think. I forget what it's called. Um, there's pota there's a potato dish. Hmm. The um, all the mango based desserts okay. um, are great. Um, so you are in short a fan of Gujarati dishes. Very much. Gujarati I love cuisine. Gujarati thalis. Okay. A lot of our friends in Mumbai <laughs> are Gujarati, so we right. have it at their homes. We've. I mean, what. Hmm. People always say, is, "Oh, this dish you shouldn't have it at a restaurant. Oh, come to our house." <laughs> uh, everyone is always absolutely convinced yes. their home cooking is better. Mm -hmm. And frankly, my experience is that's almost yeah. always true. Okay. So last question: We are at the riverfront. Uh, your your view on that? Quick view on that. My quick view is: I think that the river is something that's worth trying to emphasize. I think that the riverfront project is very ambitious. Right. I know there's some controversy around it, but mm. I think that you know what I was the most impressed by was the cleanup mm. last week and the fact that so yes. many people came. And I think that that's a reflection of the fact that residents of Ahmedabad want to be mm. part of making their city beautiful right. and that they that you know you can inspire people hmm. to feel that their contributions make a difference i i think that seeing the riverfront project hmm. what's again is striking is the ambition right um the, the desire to do something at a Great large vision. scale yeah. that is also for the public right. like i think that what i like about it is that so much of it is devoted to hmm. parks mm -hmm. right. to walkways hmm. to making it accessible to the public which i think reflects exactly what india mm -hmm. should be doing so that's it. Thank okay. you for joining. Thank you, Chacha. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much. Same here. So, Ahata DCM KJ we ane kavachit kari apni sathi ane Bharat ane America na je tamam sambandhu che ane khas kari ne je Gujarat model che tene lai ne par vachit kari ne kahiyo ke banne desho ni vache krite ane ka opportunities itle ke taku raheli che ane banne desho vache apar taku ni vache krite kahi shakai ke samagra vishwa banne desho upar nazar rakhi rahu che. A sathi tere pas atluj. Namaskar. TV9 Gujarati ने YouTube चैनल ने सब्सक्राइब करो और बेल बटन जरूर थी दबावो जिसी दरेक वीडियो ना नोटिफिकेशन तमने मरता रहे